Hi everybody, happy Advent day 14. Um, I just wanted to pop in here and let you know this is a little different video and um, I'm going to be talking about depression and anxiety. So if that is not something you are up for, I totally understand. Click out and we'll see you in a fun video tomorrow or the next day. Um, yeah, I just wanted to give a trigger warning in case there are people out there who are not up for this right now. Um, please do know we understand, but I did want to share a little bit about my story. Um, I had mentioned in a video about a month ago that I was going to do that. So, um, yeah, so here it is. Happy Vlogmas Day 14. Wow. We are getting her done. Um, this one's going to be an especially short one. I'm just going to sit here um, and get some things done that I need to get done as I sit here and chat a little bit. Um, yeah, I had talked about someday talking about my anxiety and depression and what led me to starting this channel. Um, it's kind of a crazy, crazy little, sorry, Otis is distracting me, squirrel. It's a crazy um, story in my eyes, in my eyes. So I thought I would share in case somebody else had a similar story or needed to hear it or anything like that as I organized my medication for the week. Um, so I have a wanted to do a YouTube channel. Um, I had it in the back of my mind for years. Um, my grandson, Ben, watch, started watching YouTube at a very young age. Um, he would watch it on my iPad. Boy, I would say he was four or five and he's now double digits. So, um, but we would make little videos on the back porch and he would say he was practicing for his YouTube channel. Um, and that would be Nerf fights. He would watch Nerf gun fights on YouTube. And, you know, they weren't, you know, they were acting obviously. And so he would get out there all by himself and act all over the backyard. And I would just tape him on my phone. And then we would watch them together on my phone, my little screen, and watch them together. And he wanted to have a YouTube channel doing that, um, which he's outgrown. Now he's quite the gamer and maybe someday he will game on YouTube, I don't know. But that was my first introduction to YouTube and then he slowly showed me how to find tutorials on YouTube for crafting. And um, so I really got an inkling that I wanted to start a YouTube channel and give kind of crafting tutorials or or something along those lines. Um, but I also wanted it to be uplifting and positive, but I had really low self-esteem and I was really shy um, and low self-worth. So I didn't think I was worthy or good enough. So I would never do it. I always said I would, um, I was gonna do it and I would always try to convince Libby that we needed to do it. But um, I was always gonna do it and I just never would. Then, um, long story short, so my self-worth was based on years and years and years. Um, started in grade school where I didn't think I was pretty enough. I was too fat. I was just all sorts of negativity in my, in my head. 
um, you know, I look back on pictures and I um, developed very early and I think that was part of it. Um, and also, you know, I didn't know what being gay was and I didn't know, I grew up Catholic, so um, struggled a lot with that and um, d depression and eating disorders and um, all of that growing up. So fast forward to the pandemic. I, Up until that point, I have um, always treated my depression and anxiety. I never truly knew what anxiety was. I had it, but nothing like I did during the pandemic, and I'll get to that. But I always had low self-esteem and self-worth and social anxiety. Um, my social anxiety has always been debilitating. Um, would cancel plans at the last minute, making myself physically ill, not on purpose, but my um, anxiety level would be so high I would become ill um, and all of that so that I wouldn't be able to do things or go places or um, if Libby said we didn't have to go I would say okay let's not go kind of thing um, and a lot of times I would have Emmett be my instead of me being his parent, I would have him be my crutch as far as if we'd go somewhere, don't leave me, please, you know, be my, don't leave me, I have lots of anxiety, da da da, da whatever, at family functions, at, at, you know, if he would go to a child party and parents were invited to, um, he, he would have to make sure I was comfortable before he left me, that type of thing. Just terrible things for parents to put their children through. Um, he never minded. He was very good at taking care of me, but um, hopefully I was good at taking care of him too. But in the meantime, that's not something you should put your ch children in. But anyway, so fast forward to the pandemic and... Um, we're in lockdown and I get a call from my doctor and I have I have lupus and Hashimoto's and a heart condition and a lung condition and I can go on and on and on and I have a lot of um, conditions um, that are autoimmune. So my doctor gives me a call and says you need to be especially careful, especially, especially careful. Don't don't compromise yourself. If you if you get this COVID, it could be deadly. Take care of yourself. Um, so, and I'm not hearing of other people getting calls from their doctor, just, you know, as a friendly reminder to take care of themselves. And, you know, we're hearing it on the news, we're hearing it. And my work closed down before everything else a few days before everyone else's work did i it just seemed like everything in my life panicked before everything else is that's how i can explain it um you know and we were going to go back in two weeks and my boss was like no i don't think so and um whatever so as time goes on, you know, we're in lockdown and we create our pod with Emmett and Lane where the four of us don't see other people unless, you know, we do the outside with masks six feet apart um, type of thing. And we didn't even do that. We even did that with each other. If we had them over for a meal, we'd be on the back porch, two different tables kind of thing for for months and months and months and finally um, we got a little more lenient with each other but 
where we would come inside and eat at the table kind of thing. And um, then as restrictions started lifting, we would do, you know, we would go out but wear masks and um, they were doing a little bit more than we were, but they're younger and um, and then they would kind of tell us how it was and um, would take us grocery shopping or, or whatever was needed. Um, and we would pull up and I would panic. Um, and I'd just say, I'll, I'll stay in the car you guys go in, I'll, I'll stay in the car, it's okay. And they'd be like, no, no, we can we can just go home, it's okay. Um, and we would go home and this would happen more and more where I would just have these panic attacks over and over. And um, as time went on, it became worse and worse. I would just panic more and more. Um, and the only things I was really doing was, you know, once in a while we'd go to the grocery store or um, maybe pick up food, but mostly we had it delivered. Um, we would see our other son, Carter's family, outside at either their house or ours. In fact, the first year, I think we saw them twice, and it was once I think both times were outside. They they gave us Thanksgiving food that we picked up and they came by our house once um, in the first year. And then the second year we wore masks in their house and they wore masks in our house. Um, it just, I was just scared to death of getting, getting COVID and it just got, like I said, debilitating to wear um, I was barely leaving the house. People would do things for me. Libby would, Libby would have to go into the office a couple of days a week and she would pick up things for me. And I'm sure there's things I'm forgetting. Once in a while we would go to a store, um, but it would be with Lane, Libby, Emmett and I, and we would all I would have to scope out the parking lot and if it seemed pretty empty, okay, I could go in. But if I walked in and there were, you know, too many people in the front, I'd panic and we can go back out, we can go back out. No, and I'd just stay close to them and they'd be like my my um, secret service. They'd just keep a little perimeter around me. Um, just crazy. Um, and then I would watch people and just see how they were going out and about and not wearing masks. And I just couldn't understand it. And I would panic for them and panic for me. If somebody got too close to me and they weren't wearing a mask, I would hold my breath and um, feel like I'd have to go home and shower. And it was just an awful feeling. So finally I got into therapy and um, saw a psychiatrist and got on some um, anti-anxiety and up my antidepressants and all of that. And in the meantime, I ended up getting vertigo um, and really, really debilitating. I couldn't stand up or sit too long. I had to sit at an incline. Um, I was at the pool one day and got this terrible earache in the water. And by the time I got home, I couldn't sit up straight. And um, so I went to an ear, nose, and throat doctor. And he sent me to a neurologist. And with that, I had an MRI. And they found a tumor on my brain. And it is not cancerous, or they're 99% sure it's or convinced it's not cancerous. And um, they also found that my spinal cord was, or my neck, so the discs in my neck were leaning on my spinal cord, so in that MRI. So I had a virus in my ear, in my inner ear, that within two months the vertigo went away, but I needed neck surgery immediately and 
possibly brain surgery. So that put me over the edge again. So I had the neck surgery right away, um, which was fine. It, I went through it with, with flying colors and then um, got all set up for the brain surgery. And I was gonna have brain surgery Wednesday morning and Sunday I had Emmett shave my head. Emmett and everybody, Libby and Lane were over and we shaved my head. And Monday morning I got a call and the surgery was canceled. I couldn't be off my blood thinners long enough to be able to have the surgery. Um, I also have a, a blood clotting disorder, so which is linked to the lupus. So I'm on blood thinners that um, I couldn't be off of for two weeks and you can't with brain surgery there's too many things that could go wrong if you're on blood thinners um so they canceled it so we went in for another consultation and the the other treatment was radiation and um it is not as like the surgery would get rid of it. I mean, it could grow back after surgery, but with radiation, it will shrink after a year. It could swell within the year and then start shrinking. So I did five consecutive days of radiation and I slowly got worse and worse. And nobody could understand why it was such a low dose of radiation but two hours after i had to go home and lay down and i it took me two months to get back to halfway normal i had a hard time with my speech memory um i don't know if sometimes you watch me struggle finding words um that seems to be still a little bit of remnants of having the radiation. I lost a chunk of my hair and but after two months and hearing the doctors continually say it was such a low dose this shouldn't be happening and I watched Libby get depressed. Um, I was just comfortable just sitting there doing absolutely nothing and thinking that was what my life was going to be like. And I was accepting it. And um, she came home from work one day and sat down in her chair and I was in mine. And she went to bed. She got up and went to bed and didn't say two words to me. And I knew it wasn't about me, but I also knew deep down it was because of my situation. And um, from that point on, I, I said, I'm gonna act as if I'm done. And I actually said, F it, <laughs> I'm gonna act as if. And that was a Thursday and I started swimming either Friday or Saturday and really haven't stopped except when we did end up getting COVID. Um, and I don't know, it just seemed like everything in my life was disappeared. Everything negative in my life disappeared at that moment. I no longer had poor self-worth. I no longer had low self-esteem. Um, I've always had a binge eating disorder is what they call it now, my entire life that as far as I can remember, I've always had an issue with it. Um, it's pretty much, I don't struggle with it right now. I don't know if it'll come back. Um, just, and I just, without, with no longer having those barriers, I decided it was time to start the YouTube channel. And 
Um, it used to be I would watch myself on camera and just cringe and be embarrassed. And um, now when I edit, I just laugh at myself when I'm, when I feel like I'm being silly or if I lose my words or you see my me putting little <laughs> corrections of my, um, when I can't think of the right word, which I just did. Um, I don't know, just, I now say that radiation and Tom the tumor, we named him Tom, saved my life, literally. And the anxiety disappeared. Um, I don't feel depressed. Um, I still have anxiety around wearing a mask and COVID and this stupid pandemic stuff going on, but it's not going to go away and I will still wear a mask as far as that goes, but that's more the germs and having autoimmune issues, not, it's not something I'm going to panic about and fear and live in fear about so much. Um, yeah. And so that is my story, and I have done nothing but sit here and cuddle my little snuggle bug right here. And I still have all of my bottles of medication not put into my little daily thing right here. But with that being said, I really hope this was helpful for somebody. I'm sure I'm missing parts of the story, but for the most part, that that is why I decided to finally start this this channel at 53 and not at 40 whatever when I was going to. <laughs> Wish I would have because I might be making some money by now if I continued. Um, I'll probably never make money with the way that YouTube's going now, but I'm not in it for the money. I'm in it for the memories and I'm really having fun, but, but Vlogmas is very tiring. Um, but I'm having a lot of fun um, and I love Christmas time and and the, just the warm feelings I get around Christmas time of memories of people that have passed and my childhood and even, you know, Christmases of in the past, you know, not all of them were great, but but I do have wonderful holiday memories. And um, yeah, so I just love this time of year. Hate the cold, obviously. Um, and I'm never gonna grow my hair back. I'm realizing if I keep wearing a hat because every time I pull the hat off, more hair falls out. And I don't know if that's a thing or not, but seems like it to me. But I don't, I say it every night that I'm wearing a hat. I don't know how men keep their hair so short. But anyway, that is it for tonight. I will be back tomorrow morning with Advent. And yeah, hopefully I will get in for a swim. And let's see, what can we do tomorrow? Well, I have a ton of presents to wrap. Libby has done so well wrapping her presents and I have not wrapped one. Sorry, I have such an itch on my nose. Um, and I have some cookies to bake. Oh, and I can't do much tomorrow because I am going to go to my mom's and have pizza. Hopefully play a game or two of cards with my sister and her husband. So I don't know if I will be taping there, but if not, it will be a really short video tomorrow too. So, and I'm not mad about it. I love spending time with my family. Plus I ordered something wrong for my mom on Amazon. And the last time I did that, I never returned it. So I have to prove to her that I'm not going to do that again this time. So I need to pick it up tomorrow and return it this weekend to Kohl's because that's where our Amazon returns is and um, order her the correct thing. So yeah. So that's something we have to look forward to. But yeah, tomorrow I don't think I will be doing any baking, but I might wrap presents over my lunch hour. So that'll be fun. 
because Libby's going to start figuring out everything she has before Christmas if I don't get them wrapped. So, alrighty. Well, you guys have a wonderful evening and happy Vlogmas Day 14. Ten more days till Christmas Eve. Bye-bye. Okay. Hi, everybody. Welcome to day, oh dear, 14 of Vlogmas. I'm ready for my holiday party. <laughs> And this is my outfit. And Jake and Otis are ready for Advent. <laughs> are you ready for Advent? All right. Here we go. Advent, day 14. Might be behind the snowman. It looks like you moved. No. Oh, it's at the top. Jake, you sitting so pretty? Are you sitting so pretty? Oh, so is Otis now. Look at his little tail. I love that tail, Otis. Oh, Otis is shaking. He needs a sweater too. And look at Libby's socks. There's fluff in between her feet. This is what happens. Stars. Oh, all sorts of things. Trees. Snowmen. Those are the cutest. All right. Jake. Otis. And look at Libby's socks. <laughs> it's the elf outfit. So when we come home from the pool, if there's not a toy available for Jake, he brings us the bed and shakes it vigorously. And there's always fluff all over the floor because he's still a puppy. He's oh, our precious puppy. Our precious. Oh, we have two precious puppies. Somebody's feeling threatened today. You, you got time, buddy. Don't hurry. say the goodbyes well I didn't get consulted when you cut part of me from the last vlog so I'm not so sure it matters <laughs> if I talk or not it matters goodbye y'all thank you for watching and just like Sue she she blots me out <laughs> I only cut it to make it shorter it was a long that wasn't my experience Sue it was a Two second clip. Okay, tell them what you said. No, because you've made it sound very bad. <laughs> Hi everybody, thank you so much for watching today's video. Sorry, it was a little bit of a downer today, but hope you got to know me a little better and why, why I started this channel. I just want to share my journey and let people know they're not alone out there um, and share my love of crafting and share Libby's sense of humor for sure um, and our love um, definitely our love for our family and each other so yeah that's it Please like and subscribe. We're growing. Thanks. Bye-bye.